Good afternoon YouTube, Mr Mo here, Stick Survival. Well, this is the first video I've posted for about a year and there is some reasons behind that, a couple of which I'll share with you at the moment. Uh, first and foremost, my computer, not mentioning any names like Dell, um, was complete crap. Broke down, kept trying to repair it and it just, it just died a death basically, so I had to save up some pennies and buy a new one. So anyway, I've done that now. Uh, one of the other reasons was as well as that I've taken a little bit of time and I've more or less begs uh, traded and got rid of all the other Maxpedition gear that I've reviewed in the, my last set of videos over the last couple of years and I've bought a whole new load of stuff uh, and by doing that, that enables me to bring you basically more reviews with different things. So just to kick off the new set of videos, what I've got for you today is the Maxpedition Thermite Pouch. Now I had a look at this online and I've seen a couple of really good reviews and I thought that that would be uh, an ideal sort of trade up for perhaps like a vehicle kit. And most of the kits that I do on YouTube are sort of built around 72 hours. And that's exactly what I've done with this one. This one, as you know, is a, is a leg pouch and it comes sort of with its own waist belt. And on that, I've attached, a, I guess it's a one quart canteen. Um, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But what I've done with this kit is try to organise the sort of four main areas of survival, which is shelter, fire, water and food. And... That's what I wanted to put in this kit, so without sort of droning on about those four priorities, I'll dive in and I'll show you what I've done. So first of all, in that situation, you know, I don't really want to have a big rucksack on my back, it's not very practical for me to keep that in the car, which is why I wanted a small kit. And believe it or not that this kit could actually pass as a summer kit, even late spring or early autumn, there's plenty stuff in here to allow you to do that. So I'll just batter straight on and I'll cover uh, water first. Now with the water, I do have a Guyot bottle which you've seen in other reviews but what I've managed to get my hands on was this one quart canteen but it is actually stainless steel. So that enables me to boil water. I can put that directly in the fire and boil water. All I've got to do is make sure that I don't melt the cap. Uh, so the cap can come off, I'm going to put it on like a little clip to take that off and then that can sit directly in the, the fire and boil my water. Obviously that comes with its own metal mug, again this is food grade stainless steel so it's a, a, it's actually, a, it's bigger than what I thought it was but I'm actually glad that is bigger because it actually gives me a real cooking vessel now. So not only can I be cooking something in that mug, I can be boiling water, which makes all the difference in that scenario. And it all fits up in, and you guys across the pond are familiar with these pouches anyway. It all fits up in there. And in the bottom I can put the, the Millbank bag that I keep ranting on about. I love this bit of kit. It's so simple, but really effective. And it just basically, it takes the, contaminants out of water, i.e. the first contaminant which is turbidity. So this is going to take all the organic matter out of that and then basically by boiling water takes the rest of them out. So a simple case of sitting the metal mug in the cup, it's got some stability there with the handles, hanging this from a tree, dripping water in and then placing that in the fire and that's it. And if you've got water and something to cook in then that's kind of half the battle anyway. The rest of it is really just uh, sort of cosmetic stuff. So I'll put that out of the way at the moment and then we'll have a look at the thermite pouch. What I've done here is kind of went on the same principle as what I've done with my H1 pouch, although the stuff in here is just slightly better. So instead of having like a small folding knife, what I've actually done here in this back pouch, uh, I have a little sort of cotton bandana there and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But what I've done as for sort of the knives etc is I've got the F1 Falcon Evan survival knife which is an excellent bit of kit and I've wrapped some bank line around it as well which can come in handy for 
all sorts of things. I'm sure you guys are no strangers to that. And also in the back here, what I've done is I have a pocket boy saw. This is a excellent saw. It's probably not as good as the Laplander saw, but it's it is just as good. And in an emergency situation, that is an excellent bit to kit to have. It has a nice soft grip handle, so you can get a, a really good hold of that. And it's a very good, capable saw. Again, it locks in place, so there's no chance of that folding over and coming back on your hands. So it's a very good piece of equipment to have. And it's a lot smaller than the, the Baco Laplander. And it's just as good. It just depends what you're into. But I find it very capable. So that's pretty much all I have in the back pouch there and by having it round my waist and being able to access those fairly quickly just through that it means I can get those tools when I need them without having to go digging in any, any pack. So next up inside one of the other priorities of survival is indeed fire. So what I've got here is just a small fire kit, you've probably seen this before, it's a uh, just a little plastic bag, uh, X-Bed dry bag, which keeps all the contents dry. And in there I've just got the sort of usual stuff that you would expect to have. The only difference I've made with it is I normally carry a tin of Vaseline to soak cotton balls with, which gives you a better flame. Well, what I've done is I've actually emptied that. And inside I've got some cotton buds there, I'll take them out. And then I have like a, a, another little tin in there. And the reason I've done that is because in this tin, I've got the Vaseline, which is more than enough to light a few fires. But by doing that, it also gives me this tin. So worst case scenario, when that's all depleted, I can make char cloth in this little tin here. I won't be able to make huge amounts of it, but I will be able to do char cloth. So that's the reason as to why I've set it up that way. And then as per usual, uh, Again, the, an additional that I've made to this fire steel is this ferrocium rods, just your bog standard. Uh, this one's fire flash, more or less the same. But I've removed the striker and I've put a piece of old file on here. Now this is all one tool steel and it produces a really good shower of sparks off the ferrocium rod. But by having that in there, it also gives me a steel which I can chop on flint etc to give me sparks to go that char cloth so that's the reason why that's in there as well it just gives me that other fire option on the fire kit again there's not much in there uh, there's i've got some uh, small tampons there i've heard a few comments of guys in america who are wondering why i'm carrying tampons and vaseline but believe it or not the amount of cotton wool that's in one of these is absolutely amazing and it comes in its own little waterproof case so i think it first and you can stick them in pretty much any loose corner you've got in your pack uh, just to fill up the spaces so i really really value these as a fire lighting bit of kit and in there as well, I also keep some hydration tablets and some vitamin tablets just to put in with the water. So if I need to hydrate myself or get some vitamins, you know, you've got to try and keep the carbs, the protein, the vitamins and everything like that going. So that's the reason why they're in there. And they're in there just to stop them from sort of getting wet. That's why they're in that bag with my fire kit. So that's fire and water covered. So the next thing we're looking at is uh, shelter. I'll just put that down there. Put a few things down there and then we'll do the, the shelter the shelter bits. So the shelter, the first thing that I have in here, which you've seen before, is my heat sheets bivy bag. Absolutely fantastic bit of kit. I'd highly recommend you carry one of them. Not going to bang on too much about these, but needless to say, they reflect all your body heat back so you can keep your body temperature at more or less 37 degrees. So it's an ideal bit of kit to have. Uh, you should, if you're going out walking in the woods or anything like that, you should try always to carry one of these in the bottom of your pack for as little as the way. And that kind of does the sleeping thing. Uh, and then shelter, I have here an American woodland poncho, which is, uh, I think it's a woodland poncho, it's American of some description, and it's absolutely fantastic, I guess it's probably five and a half, maybe six feet long, by three or four feet wide, so it's not huge, um, but it certainly gives me the option of keeping the rain off me, which is a, a big bonus, rain off me, 
getting inside of that takes care of a lot of the problems that you would encounter if you were out here. You might not have time to build a shelter in that initial situation that you might find yourself in, so getting into that for the night is perfect. Again, I could take a little bit of bank line off of that knife. I've got more bank line in there and can put the poncho up and jump inside of that, which is going to be a big bonus. In there as well, I also have just your bog standard foil blanket that comes in a lot of first aid survival kits so along with the, the poncho plus this I would basically cut this in half and use it as a, a fire guard and that's reflecting some of that heat back off my fire straight back into the shelter again it's going to uh, help me stay warm and maintain body temperature so you know between the three of them you can get a reasonably dry and comfortable night's sleep all out of a little pack so the next thing we're dealing he with here is just some little bits and bobs that I, I sort of throw in, and like I say, into the, all the, the cracks. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just stick them all back in there and then I'll haul them out one by one. These things here are actually quite funny, and they're balloons, but the balloons have got a pull tab in them, so when you actually blow the balloon up, you pull the tab out and they glow in the dark. My son got them for his birthday and the fantastic things, they actually glowed for about two days. So I thought, well, put a couple of them in your pack. You can blow them up and actually put them on trees. So if you were looking to be rescued, then hopefully that would guide people in the right direction. And along with that, I've got a little marker pen, which I could write messages on. They'll stay on there and light up. Absolutely fantastic idea for all the weight. I mean, it weighs absolutely nothing. It is only the weight of two balloons. And uh, I just thought I'll stick them in the corner of the pack. It gives me another option to help uh, rather aid in signalling to try and get rescued in that situation. Again, here, signalling, head torch. I've got lots of little torches that run on AA batteries, AAA batteries, etc. But at the end of the day, a head torch is good because it means that both your hands free. So that's the reason why that's in there. You get really good battery life out there. I'll not go too much into this because I've actually reviewed this on my channel. So if you're new and you haven't seen any of those reviews, just go and have a look and you'll come across this and you'll see the features on that. Uh, next up, I have... Oh, there's just another little coil, a bank line. I tend to, any spare uh, space I have in a pack, I tend just to stuff that, that in. And that's actually probably 20, 30 feet of bank line right there, which can help with all sorts of things. That's the reason that's in here. Next up, have a little bottle of TCP. Again, I can use that. Actually, if you put a few drips of this on your hand along with a little bit of water and rub it, and then cover your skin with it, it actually works really well as a, a, an insect repellent to keep those uh, bugs off you. But apart from that, obviously, if you get any cuts and scrapes and things like that while you're building shelters or doing whatever, then you've got something here to treat it with. And that's the reason, again, as to why I carry this soft rag, because this, again, could be used as a water filter, but it can make, you know, it can make a pretty good bandage. It can, it's easily washed, it's easily dried, so that's the reason that's in there along with that. Next up is a fishing kit. I've got loads and loads of fishing needles, uh, lures, floats, sinkers etc inside there with all manner of different gauges of line around there. Now we hope that this pack, like I said, 72 hours so I'm really not too bothered about this so what I would actually call this rather than a fishing kit is probably like a placebo fishing kit. Because chances are you're not going to catch much with this, but it gives you something to do during the day, keeps your mind focused, and you know, if you're lucky, you're going to get a fish on the end of it, and that's always a bonus. So that's the reason why that's in here. Uh, next up in the bottom of the pack, I have the Aquamera Frontier Pro water filter. Is it the Pro? Well, it's the emergency filter anyway, or rather the emergency straw. So worst case scenario, um, if I was to lose my metal mug or anything like that, it gives me a backup where I can drink some water. And for all the room it takes up and for all the weight, I'd rather have it in there than sitting at home in a drawer. The next thing I have in there is I have a small vial here of potassium permanganate. Again, it can be used for 
uh, wound treatment, it can be used for water treatment, it can be used as a fire lighting source and it's also an excellent signalling source. Today here in Scotland we've got quite a lot of snow cover on the ground and a few drops of that stuff on snow and you can basically spell out different messages, SOS or whatever, to alert uh, a pilot who was flying looking for you. And in the top there I have a NATO button compass pushed into the top of it which gives me a general direction should I need to, to walk out of here. And the last thing I actually have in there, again, is one of those tiny little uh, sort of survival gibbles as a nano starter. And I've got a little vial on the end of it, and it has one of those uh, small tampons in there. And that just gives me a fire lighting source as a backup, which I would put in my pocket. In fact, I would show you what I would do with that as soon as that situation arrived. I would do the following thing. That's it for the inside of the pouch. But if I go into the front zip here, this is where I keep my, sort of, at hand, straight away, a few signalling devices. So I've got my mirror here, my signalling mirror, which I always carry with me and it's always at hand if I want to get it. And I also carry my whistle, and my whistle's on a lanyard, and that's exactly what I do. So as soon as I was in that situation, I take this, put it on there, and it gives me something to wear around my neck. So should I lose this pack or anything happens, this is around my neck, which is always going to give me a means to signal, and it's always going to give me the means to light a fire. So that's the reason that was there. Worst case scenario, if I had to, if I was... I don't know, ill or something like that and I couldn't carry all this then I can put have that round my neck and put that water filter in my pocket and then I'm off. Worst case scenario and I'd try and always stuff that in as well. So that's the reason for that. Uh, and then next up in there I have a energy gel. It's just a pack of energy gel just as a quick pick me up, a boost. It can go in so why not? And then in the top here as well, right on the top of the pack, I have a little pouch and in there I've actually got some sutures, well, uh, butterfly sutures and some compedes, so if I picked up a cut or a blister or something like that, uh, there's a few plasters in there as well, it's really just a tiny little first aid kit, nothing special, but between that, that and the cloth, you know, it, it deal with all but the smallest sort of nicks that you get, and that's about it for the top. So with that we've covered fire, we've covered water and we've covered shelter. So the next thing is food. Now I've gave up a lot of the sort of little trinkets that I've had in my other packs to concentrate more on food because on the few times where I have been out and I've been practicing my survival skills with very little stuff in my pocket, I've always found the one thing that I really wish I had was some food. Uh, and, and that's really a no-brainer and that's what I've kind of dedicated this front pouch to the food and as you can see it can take a fair whack in there now I don't know if you guys in America get pot noodles I'm sure you do but that's actually a pot noodle inside a, uh, one of my son's party bags so thanks very much Ryan it's in there it's going to be, it's, it's going to last quite well in there what I tend to do if it's been sitting in there for any more than a couple of months etc then I'll change it around, I'll eat that and change it around so it's fresh and good to go. That kind of deals with the carbs. That's a, that's a good bit of kit there. And at the end of the night, if you're cold, wet and hungry, that's going to go down a treat. The other thing I carry in there is the same again in a bag, but I've got a porridge. And this is so basically the next morning when I get up and can give myself a porridge and that's going to give me heat me up and give me some energy to start getting out of there or basically just sitting around waiting. So again, and then in here is some biltong beef jerky, which is not a huge amount but it's protein, isn't it? It's protein, it's something to chomp down on your way out. So between the three of them, it kind of covers the... I've got the vitamin tablets, I've got the, the protein here and I've got the carbs there. So I think probably out of all of that, there's, there's certainly over a thousand calories in all of this lot, which is not a huge amount of food, but uh, I'd rather have this than nothing. That's why it's in there. And then I'll have a couple of sachets of coffee. 
Uh, I've only got one to show you because we've just drunk the one prior to making this video but I keep a couple of sashes of coffee in there. It's always nice to basically make yourself a hot brew. Just stop for a little while, make yourself a hot brew and get your head around the situation that you're in. And that's basically what's in the front pouch. Side pouches you can see here I've put, there's, this is a little glow in the dark light that's on and it's got some mode so it goes red uh, and then it flashes and the more that stays on the more this actual band that it's attached to glows in the dark so it's really just a way of locating this if it's sitting in the dark these forests are quite uh, dark and thick at night so it's just a way of locating that and then inside here I have my windmill lighter I've always got this and it's always accessible I would never use this windmill lighter to light a fire this sole purpose for having this windmill lighter is for lighting a signal beacon and it's always at hand, it's always ready if, if I hear a plane coming or anything like that and I want it to be rescued obviously I'd be in that situation so I would have built a signal fire and that is going to guarantee lighting that straight away uh, don't want to be digging around looking for fire steels and a bit of cotton ball to light it I just want it boom and that's it done so that's why that's there and it's in that side pouch so I can get quick access to it and then on the other side here I just have a, what I call my placebo hunting kit which is basically just a mosquito net again if I'm bedding down here at night Especially in the summer months, this place is plagued with midges, so I'm going to put that on over my head while I get inside my heat sheets bivvy bag, and that's going to keep the bugs off me. Uh, these are fantastic bits of kit as well. I can carry that and use it for foraging. I can stuff all sorts of bits and pieces in there that I find and just carry it. I can also uh, use it for fishing. There's loads and loads of uses for a simple net that probably costs a couple of dollars and quite readily available so it's it's worth having it and it doesn't take up any weight and I've stuffed it in that pouch and then inside I've got a purse net for rabbits uh, again this is more of a placebo thing it would just be a, an opportunity to you know to chance your, your mitt basically and try and catch a rabbit uh, rabbit warns have exits I would put that purse net over an exit Again, you could use that as well at a push and basically if you light a fire in the, f in the front hole, the main hole, to go into that warren, hopefully you're going to get sorry, young rabbits bolting out the exits at the back and hopefully one of them is going to get tangled up in this net or indeed this, so if it's, it's going to take a little bit of time to, to locate those holes. Probably here, I wouldn't even bother because I've not seen any rabbits around here for a long time, so again like i said it's probably more a placebo thing than any real chance of catching a rabbit but nevertheless it's it's in there anyway so that's pretty much it for the maxpedition thermite pouch as you can see there's a lot of stuff that you can put in that pouch which is just going to make all the difference it covers your tools it covers fire lighting it covers water food and those few little things that you're going to have to make your life a little bit comfortable and I would be here in Scotland as I've said before in other videos we're never definitely never any more than 40 miles away from any place so for me that's that's a that's a three-day trip uh, in worst case scenario and I'm quite confident that I can go three days on this kit so that's the reason why I plan for that. I don't go any larger because I don't ever foresee myself being in that situation. Perhaps if I was across in America or Australia, that would obviously need to be looked at again uh, for those extended trips. But for here in Scotland, I'm pretty sure that after 72 hours, you're going to be found, especially if you're wise and make a plan, do your route cards, etc. before you go. So I won't drone on and on and on about it so i hope you've enjoyed this video it's my first one back for a little while for those of you who have stuck with me and still subscribing to my channel i'd like to thank you very much i really appreciate what you're doing and hopefully now that this is my first one back i can start bringing you more and more videos i've just got to hope that i can actually get this one back now and put it on my new computer and get it loaded up okay well thanks very much Cheers.